Tonight's Board of Education meeting is being broadcast through the BCPS online live meeting broadcast and on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity, Channel 73, Verizon Files, Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. The first item on the agenda is the consideration of the December 19th agenda. Dr. Rogers, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? I am unaware of any additions or changes to tonight's agenda. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Open Meetings Act for the following reasons. To discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of employees, of, of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Consultant with counsel to obtain legal advice and to conduct and conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to the negotiations. The summary of the closed session and open session information summary can be found on board docs under this board meeting agenda date. Okay, we're going to hold one second while we get make sure that everything on teams is working for us. Okay, can you hear me on Teams? It's back. I got the message. It's back. We're good to go. So the next. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is personnel matters, and for that, I call on Ms. Feeney. Good evening, Chair Booker Dwyer, Vice President, Vice Chair Pumphrey, Superintendent Rogers, and members of the board. I would like the board's consent for the following personnel matters. Retirements, resignations, deceased recognition of service. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibits D1 through D3? So move Stileski. Do I have a second? Second, Savoy. Second. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempaw? Yes. Ms. Stileski? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Drummond? Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is administrative appointments, and for that I call on Dr. Rogers. Thank you. Good evening. Madam Chair Booker Dwyer, Vice Chair Pumphrey, and members of the board, I'm bringing forward the following administrative appointments for your approval. Assistant Principal, Woodholm Elementary School, and Specialist, Special Education, School Improvement Support. Do I have a motion to approve personnel matters as presented in Exhibit E1? So moved, Lichter. Do I have a second? Second, Stileski. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frampong? Yes. Ms. Jaleski? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Dr. Rogers? Thank you. Our first appointee this evening is Dr. Paula Gillen. Dr. Uh, Gillen, please stand. Dr. Gillen is attending this evening with her niece, Kiana John Baptiste. She should please stand as well. 
She is being appointed to the position of Assistant Principal Woodhome Elementary School. With six years of service with Baltimore County Public Schools, Dr. Gillen's BCPS experiences include classroom teacher and special education inclusion teacher at Elmwood Elementary School and resource teacher at Woodhome Elementary School. Congratulations. Our final appointment this evening is Beryl Lewis, Burrell Lewis, please stand. Miss Lewis is attending this evening with her husband, Henry Lewis, if we can give them a round of applause. She's being appointed to the position of specialist, special education, school improvement and support in the Department of Special Education. With over 26 years in education, her experiences include special education teacher, program leader, and support teacher, special education inclusion specialist, and assistant principal in Baltimore City Public Schools. Congratulations and welcome to Baltimore County Public Schools. Congratulations to you both. Our next item is public comment. This is one of the opportunities the board provides to hear the views and receive the advice of community members. If not selected to address the board, members of the public may submit their comments to, to the board members via email at boe at bcps.org. The Baltimore County Police Department's Homeland Security Unit and Office of School Safety has recommended safety and security protocols, which are posted in the boardroom and available in board docs and on boards and on the board's participation by the public website. While we encourage public input on policy programs and practices within the purview of this board and this school system, this is not the proper forum to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. Inappropriate personnel remarks, inappropriate personal remarks or other behavior, such as language that promotes violence against a BCPS employee or that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order and will not be tolerated. Persons who otherwise disrupt or disturb the meeting will not be allowed to continue their remarks and will be escorted from the meeting. Please observe the three minute clock, which will let you know when your time is up. The microphone will be turned off at the end of your time or prior to that, to that time at the discretion of the board chair. It is the practice of the board to allow elected officials to provide their comments to the board. First to speak is, is the Honorable Ruth Getz, who's the Democratic State Central Committee. Hi. Getz. Hi, thank you very much. I'm on the Republican State Central Committee. Oh. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank <laughs> you for the clarification. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I want to thank everybody um, for giving me the opportunity to speak first. It definitely is quite an honor. Um, okay, I've lived in Pikesville for 36 years and never experienced the hate that is happening today. Pikesville Middle School experienced its second anti-Semitic hatred threat in two months. Here, I printed a picture. I don't know if I can give it to somebody so that they can look at it. I'll read it. It says, um, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just reading what was written on the school. Um, at, it says, kill the kikes, Jews, um, white power. And then it has different symbols, which you can look at and try to understand them. And in, a different thing, in addition to the, the threats that are written here, is the penmanship for a middle school student is atrocious. Um, that's just a, an aside judgment as far as schools, the education of a middle school or whatever. So that, if, you, if that could be passed around, that would be great. Um, so when the, Jew, when the Jewish student saw the scribble on the wall, he was so frightened that he didn't want to return to school the next day. So the parents arranged a meeting with the principal who did not want the rabbi to attend, but the rabbi still attended. He came to speak with the parents and the principal, and he found out that the incident had not been reported to the police. And at the same time, last week, around the corner um, from the middle school, a synagogue banner 
was vandal vandalized and destroyed. This same synagogue had a Black Lives Matter sign on there for months that was never destroyed. The silence of the school board accepting hatred and death, th death threats needs to come to a stop. I'm requesting a program to educate students with Holocaust survivors or Israelis to talk about their life experiences. Um, I want to ask, what would the school have done if a student scribbled the different words instead of saying kill the Jews to say kill the blacks or kill the LBQ type of people? Um, you know, would it have been the same silence? Why weren't parents sent a letter telling them of the incident? Your silence is compliance to hatred. And the offender hasn't been found that I've heard of. So I would just like to know what your plans are. And then I want to read a very famous um, poem. Um, it's called First They Came. It was written by a German. It's called First They Came for the Communist, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. So thank you very much for this opportunity to speak out. Thank you. Okay, so now we will call from our nonprofit community groups, and our first speaker is Ms. Marietta English from the Baltimore County NAACP. Good evening. It's been a minute. Good evening, Chairwoman Booker Dwyer, Vice Chair Pumphrey. Dr. Rogers, and school board members. My name is Marietta English, and I chair the AXO program for Baltimore County branch of the NAACP. AXO stands for Afro-American Academic Scientific Olympics. It was founded for young people to be recognized for academic, scientific, and artistic achievement, allowing young people to be recognized equal to that of athletes athletes and entertainers. There are 26 categories that the students in grade 9 through 12 can compete for science, performing arts, humanities, and culinary arts. They compete locally and the gold medal winners go on to compete nationally for awards. The same gold, silver, and bronze. We were very fortunate this year in that one of our gold medal winners wrote an essay and she won a $10,000 scholarship. To be applauded for our students. Oh, let's give it up for them. The AXO program is an enrichment program. Over the years, the students work with mentors and teachers to develop projects and participate in enrichment opportunities. We're proud of our partnership with Baltimore County Public Schools they provide many opportunities for our students to participate and develop. I want to personally thank Dr. Rogers for your continued support of the program. Thanks to you, we have 17 coordinators. This is a first. We have never had that many coordinators for our program. We had our first meeting yesterday virtually, and we had as many as 30 participants on the call. Another first. We've never had this many. So thank you so very much. We look forward to an excellent program again this year. I also chair the Education Committee for the NAACP, but I will bring those issues to you at a later date. Right now, we are very happy about our AXO program. If you would like a AXO shirt, just let me know. I want to thank you all, and happy holidays to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, for our, from our nonprofit community groups, we have Ms. Shuli Zai from the Chinese American Parent Association of the of the Baltimore community of the Baltimore community. And please let me know if I if I mispronounced your name. Uh, it's fine, Sha. That's fine. Shai. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Great. Good evening. 
Dear Madam Chair, Ms. Abdul-Dwyer, Vice Chair, Ms. Pumphrey, Superintendent, Superintendent Dr. Rogers, and all board members. I'm Shu Nixia, the President of the Chinese American Parent Association of the Baltimore Community. Tonight, on behalf of the Chinese American community, I want to express our sincere gratitude to the invaluable support and meaningful engagement that BCPA staff and fellow Board of Education members have extended to our community. Early this year, Ms. Dominovsky, together with her two lovely children, visited Baltimore Chinese Language School located at uh, Towson University on a Sunday afternoon. In another event, Ms. Dominovsky generously devoted her Sunday evening and conducted a mock, mock interview about public service with our community members during our online meeting. We thank Ms. Dominovsky for this significant gesture which showcased BOE's interest in understanding our community on a personal level. This May, during the AAPI Heritage Month, I attended the BOE meetings to testify about the importance of recognizing the Asian American Pacific Island heritage in public schools. I received an instant response from former BOE chair, Ms. Nictor, and the BCPS Director of Social Studies explained to me the commitment of the BCPS to creating an inclusive curriculum by purchasing resources that provide students with device, historic and literature narratives, including AAPI. BCPS is committed to fostering positive relationships with our community as well. The director of the BCPS Outreach Office, Ms. Susan Han, arranged an introductory meeting with our organization. She invited more than 10 staff from different BCPS offices, and all of them provided valuable information about the schools. During the transition period when the BCPS new superintendent assumed the role, the, trans the transition team communicated with us asking for our needs and suggestions, further highlighting BCPS dedication to open dialogue and collaboration. So next year, we look forward to the continued collaboration and positive development, development, development <laughs> that will arise from our club uh, collective dedication to the well-being and success of our students. Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Nikki Cole from the Baltimore County Education Justice Table. Hello, good evening. Uh, nice to see y'all. My name is Nikki Cole. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Good evening, Chairwoman Tierra Booker Dwyer, Vice Chair Christina Pumphrey, and of course, Dr. Rogers. Uh, nice to see y'all and all members of the board. Um, I'm Nikki Cole. I am the coordinator for the Baltimore County Education Justice Table. For those of you that we haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, we look forward to meeting you. We are a two-year-old coalition of about 16 organizations across the county that all care about equity in Baltimore County Public Schools. And I'm here tonight just to ask that as you um, are considering the budget for next year to continue prioritizing the implementation of community schools, um, we ask that you prioritize uh, protecting and maintaining transparency around the resources for adequate staffing of all the community schools, including the community school coordinator and the health coordinators for ongoing large-scale public education events and commu communications across the identified community schools. I think there are 76, 78 now something like that, um, to have ongoing in-person and digital needs and resource assessments um, of parents, students, educators, and community stakeholders, and to um, prioritize the development of positive behavioral practices um, and development, professional development for our educators. Um, and finally, developing uh, before, during, and after school programs and safe play spaces for our youth and more. Um, 
thank you so much for your dedication to achieving student equity and our coalition looks forward to um, adding capacity and partnering with y'all for the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Next are our individual citizens and student groups. And our first speaker is Ms. Sharon Serhoff. Good evening. <coughs> I am here today, I think I sound like a broken record, um, and I was making this remark when I first came into the building. Um, the school district has said that its priority is special education, or at least one of their priorities. That's not what I'm seeing. <coughs> That's why I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again, and nobody's listening. I'm hearing from parents that IEPs are not being followed. An IEP is not a menu like we go to a restaurant and we pick one from column A and one from column B. An IEP is meant to be followed as it is written. So if there is extended time and a reduced workload, and it's not one or the other, it's both. If it says communicate with a parent, a parent shouldn't hear silence for an entire half a school year. That's what's going on. And schools are admitting to it, and they're saying, yeah, we, we just have to do a better job. Well, if you realize that, then do it because these kids' grades are suffering. I have students who are usually, when their IEPs are being followed, they're a straight A student. Right now they're getting Ds. That's not acceptable. If a teacher is asked for a conference from a parent, that parent shouldn't hear silence for an entire half school year. And that's what I'm seeing, and that's what I'm hearing. And this is not just from my clients, this is from parents all over the county. This needs to be addressed more appropriately. And I'm sorry to say this, but one of the biggest culprits is the compliance office. Because I had a recent incident, several recent incidents where Timelines haven't been followed. I've reported it. I said I'm going to say something to the state about it, and the response was, well, it's the school's fault. No, if, if it's your people that are doing something wrong, it's your fault. The compliance office is not making sure that timelines are being followed that parents are getting 10-day and 5-day notices. Things need to change. Thank you. Thank you. Our, next, our next person is Ms. Lauren Shapiro. Good evening, everybody, and thank you all for being here and allowing me the opportunity to be here. I'm a very involved parent of two children in the Baltimore County public school system, and our school is being affected by the boundary study. And so I am coming to you with a request to have my zone, my, my neighborhood be zoned to Fort Garrison. Currently, my children are actually enrolled in Summit Park. And I have to admit that I am extremely nervous and concerned with where the current boundary study is going to be implemented potentially when you guys make a decision in March. I was a parent that was selected that was a part of the committee meetings. And I tried to fight as hard as I could, but I couldn't apparently get my message across. And so some of my concerns are the testing scores that I've seen that are on the Baltimore County website 
for the, for the children that are coming from Millbrook and Wellwood over to Summit Park, which is a little over 200 students. The test scores are around 9% efficiency in math and 16% efficiency in ELA. And my concern is that my children are not going to get the attention that they need because the children that are coming into the school are going to need more guidance educationally, more attention educationally, and with a much larger school and larger classroom sizes, I'm extremely concerned that my children aren't, again, gonna get the attention. I will say that I think I'm only one parent that is asking to leave Summit Park to go to Fort Garrison, so you guys might be surprised by that request. Um, one thing that I noticed from being a part of the committee is Fort Garrison is not changing at all. They were a part of this boundary study, but yet they're the only school out of, I believe, the six, and nothing is changing. No one is leaving, no one is coming in. So I'm hoping that one family and one neighborhood won't make a difference, especially considering they're under capacity. So to get to that, because I know there's a time restraint, I live in a neighborhood of only six houses. I'm right off of Old Court. The boundary line for Fort Garrison and Summit Park is Old Court. So I provided a map and I'll circle my neighborhood, but I am right on the line. Again, I'm in a neighborhood of only six houses. I've spoken to every single neighbor. The five other houses all go to the private school, all go to private schools. I am begging you to make this change for me and my family because otherwise I feel as though I'm gonna be forced to leave the public school system and go to the private school system because I'm petrified over what's gonna to happen to Summit Park. Um, I believe that's everything that I need to say. Uh, again, with the zoning as far as bus routes, because I know that was something that, that was of concern in the committee meetings, the bus is gonna be on Old Court and I'm right off of Old Court. So to add my neighborhood in strategically for buses is not gonna make a difference. If you need a petition signed by my other five neighbors, they've all told me last night they're happy to do so, so they will be on board. It's only six houses and it's an Thank you. Am I allowed to give, give you this or do you need this? You can have it. Okay, our next speaker is Mr. J. Bernstein. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good evening, my name is Jay Bernstein. I'm a member of the Baltimore Jewish community. And I also wanna talk about what the anti-Semitic incidents that recently occurred at Pikesville Middle School. Um, you may be aware of the fact that anti-Semitic incidents are spiking across the country. They need to be taken seriously and addressed appropriately. And based on the information that I'm aware of, that did not happen at Pikesville Middle School. There were several incidents of anti-Semitic and racist graffiti that appeared at the school. And what's significant here is what did not happen. Law enforcement was not immediately contacted. Parents were not immediately notified. There was no effort to educate the student body about this issue and no effort to identify the perpetrator. All of that is unacceptable. And I would contrast that with two other similar incidents that recently occurred right here in Maryland. In May of 2019, there was racist graffiti in the bathroom at Catonsville Middle School. The school reported that to the police and they provided notification to the parents the very next day. In February of 2020, uh, there was a racial slur found graffitied inside a bathroom at Chesapeake High School in Anne Arundel County. And again, the parents were immediately notified. Uh, the students were asked to participate in a forum on bias and hate crimes. And the school urged their parent body to talk to their children to make sure they report such matters immediately. And that's what needs to happen here. Uh, the fact that it did not happen at Pikesville Middle School is very disturbing. And um, in addition to rectifying this problem at Pikesville Middle School, I think it is incumbent upon the board to make sure that all Baltimore County schools understand the proper protocol to be followed, to make sure there is a protocol to be followed uh, when these types of things occur or recur, which unfortunately is likely to happen in today's environment. Schools need to know how to respond, the need to contact law enforcement, the need to immediately notify the student body, the, the parent body, and to take efforts to educate the student body to make sure that these things do not happen again. And that applies whether that graffiti is directed against Jews, Muslims, or any other minority group or any other particular person 
within the school. So, so again, I urge the, uh, the board to take action um, to make sure this does not happen again, uh, to make sure that particularly the authorities of Pikesville Middle School know to how to handle these incidents in the proper way, which did not happen um, with regards to the incidents that I refer to. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to address the board and wish all of you a happy holiday season. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Haiti Rodriguez. Okay. Our next speaker is Ms. Debbie Katz Katzen. Hello. Good evening, uh, Chairman, Tiara Booker Dwyer, Dr. Miriam Rogers, Vice Chair Christina Pumphrey. Um, I'm Debbie Katzen. I am a parent. <laughs> There has been recent attention brought to the anti-Semitic incidents in BCPS schools. I strongly feel that anti-Semitism cannot, cannot be tolerated in our schools. The amount of hate and anti-Semitism we see all over the world and on college campuses today is very scary. To hear of it occurring with middle schoolers who probably don't even realize the history of anti-Semitism and the impact of their actions is alarming. The school system must do more to educate our young people and address the disturbing trend in a more concrete and proactive way. My two children attend a large BCPS middle school that is quite diverse in its population. Many different religious, racial, and socioeconomic levels are there. I appreciate the administration and the school police officer that are in place. I do feel that my children are safe there and the administration is looking out for all the children in the school and doing the best they can to appropriately address all the issues that have come up. While an isolated incident may be dealt with privately, repeated incidents should be used as learning opportunities. I applaud the general educational approach that builds awareness of how we should respect and treat others with no tolerance for discrimination. Learning what respectful treatment of other students looks like and the dangers of hate speech in all forms, regardless of what the differences are. Religious, racial, disability levels is needed. It would be nice to see countywide implementation of explicit lessons on the dangers of hate speech and additionally on the importance of reporting it immediately to administration. Perhaps that could be done during advisory periods in the middle school levels. Teaching these things to our students is critical for fighting hate and bigotry. Focus groups can also be used to get a pulse on what is actually happening around the building that is not reported. These two specific strategies have been used at my children's school to combat future incidents that may or may not occur. <sighs> Anti-Semitism and the Holocaust are difficult subjects to teach, especially in middle school, but there are clearly increasing more important with the current tensions and climate. Perhaps these topics could be included earlier in the curriculum. As seventh graders, my students have learned about the spread of Islam and the spread of Christianity in world history and explored prejudice and racism in language arts. But the topics of the Holocaust do not appear until the eighth grade. Teachers of all grade levels must be prepared and equipped with more resources to better address the topic of anti-Semitism and communicate these topics in a sensitive way. As much as I am disturbed that my children have been exposed, oh, thank. Continue to be proud of their Jewish heritage and are not afraid to go to school. Parents and administrators need to work together to remind their students that school is a safe place. Thank you, thank you. And since there there is a speaker space available, we will now call from the wait list, and we have Dr. Ferrone. Uh, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Oh, oh no, nope, sorry, wait, sorry, I had, it's a different list. Sorry, um, Dr. Ferrone. Um, no, no. We have uh, Mr. Jackson from the um, Baltimore County Education Justice Table. Good evening, Madam Chair, Booker Dwyer, and also Vice Chair Pumphrey and also Superintendent Dr. Rogers. My name is Howard Jackson. 
I'm a member of TAPCO and also the Baltimore County Education Justice Table. Uh, my organization is part of Baltimore County uh, Committee, and we are a coalition of organizations, as you've heard earlier, across this county working together to advance equity in public education so that all students thrive in the outside and also inside the classroom. While you're evaluating the resources available for the next fiscal school year, we ask that you will prioritize and implement the community schools. When prioritized and implemented with the collective organizing approach, the community schools model closed achievement gaps in students from working class and also historically marginalized communities. The results have been proven over the last 15 years in the school districts across the nation. We ask that you prioritize protecting the expanding resources for one, adequate staffing for all community schools, including the community school coordinators. Two, ongoing large scale public education events and communication across Baltimore County Public Schools, identifying community schools. Ongoing and in person and digital needs and resources, assessments of parents, students, educators, and community stakeholders. Positive behavior practices, professional development for educators and administrators, and developing for before and during and after school programs in safe place, space for youth and also for others. As a former organizer in Baltimore City with the organization called BUILD, Baltimore United and Leadership Development, I was responsible for organizing many communities around low wage workers, around homelessness, around education. As I started my career here in Baltimore County as an organizer, now I'm in my 20th year as a teacher at Newtown High School and part of TAPCO. 20 years ago, I was charged to come out in Baltimore County and organize. 20 years later, we we're right back at that same table with more advanced ways of organizing. This is very passionate to me. i tell you a story real quickly that when we are inside the walls and we do not go outside the walls to school walls, we are two communities. Going beyond the walls will unite all entities, institutions, so that we can have a place where our students, our communities will thrive. So we look forward to our continued dialogue with you, resources bearing, so that we can now move forward to develop the community schools in Baltimore County. Thank you very much, and have a happy holiday. Thank you. And before we move on to the public comment on board policy, I, I want to turn the floor over to Dr. Rogers. Thank you. I wanted to take a moment to um, really thank all of our uh, guests who've made pub public comments this evening. Very passionate pleas around um, acts of anti-Semitism uh, to make sure that it is clear as Baltimore County Public Schools, we do not tolerate acts of hate. Um, uh, against any of our students or staff members. Um, our standard practices include once something is reported to investigate, to reach out to our external partners, and to of course um, communicate with our communities. I appreciate the concrete suggestions around um, using advisory time for our, our middle school students and really uh, you know, those focus groups uh, to hear from our students in terms of their experiences. I also want to um, thank Executive Director Brenda Bergen uh, from the Greengate Jewish Center um, who reached out to the school, uh, Pikesville Middle School in particular, uh, and retracted the call to action after she had an opportunity um, to follow up with the assistant principal. Um, and you know they shared that they uh, regretted involvement in this situation. Um, so while that spoke to the specific situation that they sent out um, information about to families, I do want to reiterate our commitment as a school system to make sure uh, that we respond swiftly to any um, and all acts um, of hatred in our schools, um, as well as that we continue to work proactively to make sure that all students understand that we uh, recognize and appreciate um, kindness to all and making sure that we're inclusive as a school system. So thank you for those uh, an opportunity to make those comments. 
Yes, thank you, Dr. Rogers. And know that the Board of Education, we stand with um, the comments that, that Dr. Rogers ha has made. Um, hate speech or actions of hate of any kind simply is not tolerated in Baltimore County Public Schools. So please continue to make us aware and we will, um, and sh we will continue to take a proactive stance on it. So next is public comment on Board Policy 5140 assignment and or special permission transfer. And our first speaker is Ms. Sharon Saroff. Good evening. <clears throat> I was not, I know about the, uh, this particular policy. I was not able to actually get the uh, changes off the uh, website, but what I do want to note to the board is that a lot of these policies do not have enough information for parents to understand and be guided by them. Um, and this is one of them that needs a lot of information. Uh, parents need to know exactly what is entailed, what the process is. I also want to make a note of the fact that there is a timeline, and most people don't know about that timeline. Um, it's not noted on the website. It's not noted anywhere that there is a timeline. Last year, the timeline was April to the end of the school year. And I had a client that needed a special permission transfer and couldn't get it as a result. Um, so we need to provide those details to families on the website, make it easy to access, and make sure that parents are aware of the information. Maybe not have a deadline. Maybe not have a window. Things happen. And not all our schools are the same. We would like to think that they are, but they're not. So we need to be a little bit uh, more flexible on these special permission transfers. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Lauren Shapiro. I didn't realize I get to speak again. On board policy 5140? I, I'm not sure what that, I'm not sure, sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I just came here to speak about moving my, my house to, some, to Fort Garrison. Okay. I'm sorry, I wish I could be more of help, but. I'm, I'm happy to be in the future, but with this, I, 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 that's not why I came. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. All right. You. Thank you. Happy holidays. Yes. Happy holidays. Um, our, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Bosch Ferron. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, happy holiday to all. Good evening. Um, to keep it brief, uh, this policy is really brief. I mean, it is amazingly brief. Uh, I did send you a letter with the lines of concerns. Line number 19 talks about the uh, definition of homeschool. Line 21-23 uh, talks about uh, permission for transfer. And then line 27, 28, and I think 26 uh, talks about the school system assigning students to their homeschool. What I think is lacking here is that this policy does not really address uh, illegal immigrants. Now, I'm really awkward really saying that because I am an immigrant, but I am a legal immigrant, and I benefited from Baltimore County, and Baltimore County benefited from me and many others like me a lot. Uh, however, the problem with people who are called undocumented aliens or residents that they are illegal and they come in, they cross the river down south 
they come to Maryland and other states and they use the school system. They haven't paid taxes like I do and many others legals like us. They stress the system. They make the school overgrounded, uh, overcrowded. They make the school uh, teachers more stressed out. And many of them truly don't have, um, you know, uh, their uh, allegiance to the United States. Uh, they have dual allegiance. And I think on the long term, that really creates problem. What is really specific for me here is that um, the Pew Foundation, for instance, estimates that illegal residents uh, cost the taxpayers about $6,000 a year for education, health care, police work, etc. And I'm looking at the school system. I know you need more money, but also you need to address illegal residents that are using the system. Now, you may tell me, well, we can't do that. We are local educational area. Yeah, I understand that. But we have two senators and we have multiple Congress women and men. And I think at the end of the day, the school system is being affected negatively by too much crowding in part by illegal residents. And that part is basically stretching the system. This policy does not really address that. And we talk about equity. Mm. All right, I'm done, I guess. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Farone, or Dr. Farone. The next item on the agenda is action taken in closed session. And for that, I call on Mr. Burns. Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, Dr. Rogers, members of the board, uh, this will be quick, I think. Uh, this would be an appropriate time for the board to approve the action that the board took in closed session regarding the superintendent's evaluation instrument. Do I have a motion to approve the action taken in closed session on the superintendent's evaluation tool? So moved, Stolaski. So moved, Rimpong. Is there a second? Second, Savoy. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Jominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frampong? Yes. Ms. Jalowski? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is new business report on board policy. This is the first reader for this policy, and for that, I call on Ms. Christina Pumphrey, Chair of the Policy Review Committee. Thank you. Members of the board, the Policy Review Committee asks that the board accept this report of the committee's recommendation of proposed changes to Board Policy 5140, assignment and or special permission transfer. This policy is presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit H. May I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Board's Policy Review Committee, committee for Board Policy 5140? So moved, Stileski. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Stileski? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the report on proposed FY 2025 county capital budget. And for that, I call on Dr. Grimm. Good evening, Board Chair Booker Dwyer, Vice Chair Pumphrey. Superintendent Dr. Rogers, members of the board. We are here this evening to provide you with information related to the proposed FY25 county capital budget. Next slide, please. This slide depicts the state capital budget schedule, which has been previously shared with you. Next slide, please. This slide shows the state capital budget, 
which state capital budget requests, which were approved by the board in September. Next slide, please. This slide shows the county capital schedule. I'm sorry, I need my glasses. Can you read my notes? <laughs> This slide shows the county capital schedule. Um, and as noted in the introduction, our board work session on January the 9th and your vote, including the board work session on January 9th and your vote on January 23rd. We encourage you to share questions or concerns with us in advance of the work session on January the 9th. Next slide, please. This slide shows our county capital requests for your consideration. Next slide, please. Thank you. Are there any questions? I have, a, I have a question if I should ask a question. So are we supposed to ask questions now or are we supposed we're, to send them to the? We're going to send them. So um, board members are requested to provide their questions related to the proposed county capital budget request to Dr. Rogers by the close of business on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Thank so, you. Thank you, Dr. Graham. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is information. The first item is the FY24 general fund report on revenues, expenditures, and encumbrances. Budget and actual, um, and actual for the period ending October 2023. And next to the minority business enterprise and small business enterprise annual report for 2022-2023, board policy 3200 requires the superintendent to report on the participation of minority and small business enterprises annually. The next information item is the report on the official enrollment for Baltimore County Public Schools calculated on September 30th, 2023 in accordance with the Maryland State Department of Education policies. The next three items are the revised superintendent's rules, 3150, 3310, and 3330. The last information item is the third party billing annual report for 2022-2023. The office is responsible for collecting reimbursements connected with the Medicaid home and the community-based autism waiver program and the out-of-county living arrangement program for case management and health-related services. The next item on the agenda is board committee updates and agenda setting. First are committee updates. I will start with the audit committee, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Our next meeting is Tuesday, January 16th at 4.30 p.m. So I encourage everyone to tune in. Thank you. Thank you. Budget Committee, Ms. Dominowski. We have no updates at this time. Okay. Building and Contracts, Ms. Harvey. There are no updates at this time. Thank you. Oops, okay. Curriculum Committee, Ms. Lichter. We have a meeting the week we come back from winter break. I think it's the second or the fourth, but it'll be on the um, board stock. So thank you. Thank you. Equity Committee, Dr. Savoy. Yes, the next meeting will be held on January 4th through teens at 4 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. The Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee, that is me. Our next uh, committee meeting is January 22nd at 4.30 p.m. over Teams. Policy Review Committee, Ms. Pumphrey. No updates at this time. Okay. The next agenda item, um, items. Board members, please raise your hand to indicate if you have any comments or items for consideration. All right, the last item on the agenda is announcements. The board's next meeting will be held on Tuesday, January 9th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. We wish you all a, a wonderful holiday season. We hope that you can take some time and enjoy with your family and um, take some time off. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. The meeting is now adjourned and we will see you in 2024.